taxpayers. And so while it's been slow going toward accomplishing the goal set out by the movement to increase the minimum wage for fast food workers, there can be no doubt after all we've seen and heard that it's only going to continue to pick up speed. Joining me now is Heather McGee, president of Demos and contributor for MSNBC, and Equatia Legrand, a cashier at KFC and a participant in Thursday's strike. Thank you both for joining me. Thank you. I want to read an excerpt from an article written by Lee Fang of The Nation about conservatives going after worker centers. And he writes, a group called Worker Center Watch launched a series of YouTube videos aimed at discrediting the Black Friday protest staged by worker centers against big box retailers. One video depicted the activists as professional protesters who haven't bothered to get jobs themselves. Another video from the group alleges that the Restaurant Opportunity Center, our Walmart, and other worker centers are nothing more than union front groups designed to make more money for greedy union bosses. Now we know that this is a criticism often levied against low wage protests, suggesting that workers themselves aren't really driving the movement. So Nequesha, I want to ask you first, what do you make of that claim? What I think of that claim is ridiculous because at the end of the day, we are hardworking people. We are all workers. Regardless how you feel, what we are doing, it doesn't matter what we are doing. At the end of the day, I'm working, trying to provide for my family, and I deserve better for me and my family. Last week, Heather, the CEO of Subway, Fred DeLuca, sat down in an interview with CNBC and said something I found absolutely stunning. I mean, st I was stunned by this. When asked if he was concerned about how a federal minimum wage would impact his business, this is what the CEO of Subway said. This increase would impact Subway plus every other competitor, so it would not put any brand at a particular disadvantage. It might have a slight impact on consumers because what's going to happen is a wage increase will happen and all the restaurant owners will have to recoup that somehow, usually through a price increase. Over the years, I've seen so many of these wage increases. I think it's normal. It won't have a negative impact, hopefully. And that's what I tell my workers. Heather, this is from the head of the largest fast food chain in the world. What do we make of this? Well, and, and here's something that we know now. Um, because of the fighting of people like Nkwesha, and I just have to say it's such an honor to be here with you this morning, um, there's simply nothing more powerful than people standing up for themselves and shining a spotlight on the conditions that are contrary to our values. And one of the conditions that's very contrary to our values is the incredible CEO to worker disparity in fast food. Demos research by my colleague Kat Roisland shows that it is actually the worst in the country. Um, the gap between the average CEO and the average worker in fast food has quadrupled since 2000 to over 1,000 to one. So when we wow. think about what is happening to frontline workers who are not able to make ends meet, who are mm -hmm. relying on public assistance, we also have to look at the other part of that enterprise, which is the incredible amount of profit and CEO pay. Okay, but the Subway CEO makes $3 billion a year, a year and we have uh, a recent report from NELP that looks at who does the day-to-day -day business of running fast food businesses. Mm -hmm. It's mostly franchisees, 76%. Mm -hmm. Isn't it easy for him to say, hey, sure, you can increase it, but he's not the one that's going to take a hit. He's going to still have his $3 billion. At the end of the day, I mean, he still has his $3 million, but he, he has it. That's the thing. He has it. So therefore, it shouldn't be a, a problem between the, the, the franchisees and the CEOs because at the end of the day, this is why we stand it up because we know these corporations have the money for it. I mean, they talk about prices, but prices been going up. But now that's a problem that the prices going up. You always, you always bringing up prices. Right. Without letting us know. One day you're coming in, it's one price, then the next week it's another. So then the day that's ridiculous. You had the money. Nequesha, I'm assuming you work. So you work at KFC. This is you've been involved in every strike, right? Six? Yes. Or is this number seven? This was my sixth this strike. This was your sixth strike. Thursday. I'm assuming you work for a franchise owner. Yes. And the argument often is that franchisees are squeezed in terms of cost. So how do we how do we respond to this issue about franchisees getting squeezed versus the parent corporation? Well, I was just going to say, um, just from, from my perspective, it is true that the franchise deal is one of the, the worst deals in business, that the same kind of rapacious um, behavior that um, C CEOs are using against uh, low-wage workers often are the same for franchise owners, right, who are, you know, small business people who have terrible legal deals. Mm -hmm. And there should be actually reforms to franchise laws to make sure that, you know, the small business owners who own individual stores actually get a better deal.
But that said, this is a question about how we order our economy overall. Fast food is the single lowest paid mm. job in the economy. Mm. These kinds of low wage jobs are our future unless we do something about it. Nikolaj, I want to give you the last word because I think you met an employee from Denmark who works at McDonald's, came to New York to support the protest, and wrote an article for Reuters about her $21 an hour <laughs> wage, right? She yeah. says, quote, to anyone who says that fast food jobs can't be good jobs, I would answer that mine isn't bad. In fact, parts of it are just fine. Under our union agreement, I have paid sick leave, workers are that workers are still fighting for in many places in the world. We get overtime pay, guaranteed hours, et cetera. What was that like to meet a worker from Denmark who makes $21 an hour? First off, before I get to the $21 an hour, it was more powerful when she told me that they have a union mm. because that is the most important thing that the workers are the workers today are really fighting for, a union, sticking together and having a voice in their workplace. I mean, once we have a union, that money is going to come. Now, the right. $21, that's right. just <laughs> incredible. Like, what, like, why is the United States behind? Like, yeah. why, what's and, going on? And, I mean, these companies, these corporations started here in America first. Right. They started right, right here. Your breadwinner is right here, and you just left us behind. And just knowing that overseas is making that much money, it's like, oh, that makes me want to fight so, even more. So let's leave it there. You're going to get to 15 one day, but you might even get to 21. <laughs> Nequatia Legrand, thank you so much for joining us. Heather McGee is coming back.